coming up on today's show. The, the first thing I hear from a lot of people is, I feel completely overwhelmed. I'm just kind of curious, why is organizing in general such a daunting task? So there's accumulation and the size and the amount. How to overcome the anxiety of getting organized today on Keeping You Organized. Hello, welcome to Keeping You Organized. Uh, this week uh, on our live Facebook show, we've been talking all about filing and uh, kind of setting up filing systems. But one of the things that uh, comes into play when you get organized all the time is the overwhelm, the, you know, getting anxious about it, anxiety. So we're gonna address that, uh, that piece of the uh, puzzle today with Julie Ulmer from MindingYourManner.com. Julie, welcome to Keeping You Organized. Thank you, John. It's always a pleasure to be here. Okay, great. Well, you know, um, I'm sure as a professional organizer, you've heard this all the time. You know, you meet with a client mm -hmm. for the first time and maybe they didn't even call you because they were overwhelmed. So how does someone know whether they're you know, overwhelmed or not? I mean, I think people would know, but um, there's some signals maybe that we could uh, kind of look at. Yeah, you know, the, the first thing I hear from a lot of people is I feel completely overwhelmed. But then there's a lot of times that we don't even know anxiety is sort of behind the scenes. And of course, uh, I'm not a medical doctor and, and you know, all of that disclaimer. Um, so some of the anxious feelings come out in different ways. Uh, some are very obvious for people. Sweaty palms, excessive sweating, heart pounding, um, having difficulty catching their breath, even having a headache or an upset stomach, not feeling right. Muscle tension can be a real uh, um, idea that anxiety is going on in your whole body and you won't even know it until sometimes you come home from work and you finally sit down and your shoulders are all scrunched up. So one of the first things I think that's helpful is identifying, you know, am I actually feeling um, overwhelmed just because of, you know, this big mess or this big pile of papers or am, you know, is this a, a physical reaction uh, that is sort of out of my control? So just identifying the physical aspects um, of anxiety. And of course, the mental is the feeling overwhelmed, the I don't know where to start, I don't even know how to begin. Right. And then I like to talk about identifying why. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. It sounds kind of like uh, one of those uh, drug commercials. Side effects of organizing may include, <laughs> you know, nausea. <laughs> and uh, sure. you know, I think a lot of people have been in that uh, situation before. Uh, yeah. w why, uh, before we go on to, you know, identifying the why, you know, for particular yeah. people, I'm just kind of curious, why is organizing in general such a daunting task? Usually it is, um, it, it's the size, okay. you know, something that has, has accrued over years. Um, young families starting out, they're super busy. They go on, they, they bring up their families and finally they're empty nesters. Now all of a sudden they're dealing with years and years worth of, of you know, raising a family and a household. They didn't have time before. They were busy going right. to baseball games and, you know, getting their kids dressed for prom, et cetera. Right. So there's accumulation and the size and the amount. I think a lot of it rests with people who have perfectionist tendencies. So it's, I can't do this until every duck is in a row and I'm ready to actually do this project. Um, I need to do it perfectly. Of course, that's another perfectionist tendency. Um, I want to do it all in one weekend. You know, I don't want to ever have to do this again. So a one and done kind of philosophy, which unfortunately holds a lot of people back because, you know, it's it's a constant decluttering, organizing, keeping track of papers, letting go of stuff is actually a constant. So for some people, I think that it's, it's the perfectionist tendencies, um, lack of time, lack of commitment. They never needed to do it until they got to a certain point. Right, so that's kind of part of the identifying the why is, uh, you know, uh, on a specific case, when you are dealing with someone, do you kind of get into that right away? Or, uh, I mean, I know yeah. we're not doctors and we can't diagnose things, nope. so well, nope. how do you nope. work that? It's just that observational. Uh -huh. It's observational and finding out the why behind 
is what will hopefully allay some of those worries. Right. You know, if we don't find out what the what the problem is with beginning the project in the first place, it's always going to be a stumbling block. So let's identify what's going on. Is it that the fear is I might need it someday? And if it's not right here in my home, how am I ever going to find, you know, this same wrench again or this same set of knitting needles again. Uh, so there's that uh, need it someday. There's the fear of failure. Again, that goes along with perfectionism. You know, if I'm going to do this, it has to be done right. A lot of people are afraid of losing memories. So they're afraid that if they let go of a certain physical, tangible, material possession, that they're going to lose the memories that are attached. Um, a lot of people are afraid of getting distracted even. You know, again, this, we're going to do it all in one fell swoop. So um, I know that it's going to be, a, you know, busy for the next couple of months. I better not start this project now because the chances are I'm going to have to come back to it many times over. And I'd rather just do it all in one fell swoop. Right. So identifying some of those whys, I think, are very, it's very helpful um, so that you can combat the problem. Otherwise, you know, it's just peripheral. Uh, the kind of work or the organizing or simplifying that you might be doing. Yeah. Can you give us an example from uh, maybe a client not using their name or anything of like what was sure. their why? I mean, I know you've given some kind of generic examples, but like a real world, like here's a, you know, I was just working with a client, you know, a couple months ago and here's, here was their why <laughs> to help people identify maybe. Sure. Catastrophic thinking is one of uh, a, a whys. And I've had clients who have, Believe it or not, and, and I get this, I understand where they're coming from. Believe it or not, the idea was if I start wrestling around with all these papers and I start, um, you know, getting together all the tax stuff and whatnot, I might even trigger an IRS audit just by, you know, touching on all these papers. And um, I think some of it is the if it, it, we've all had this happen, right? The minute it hit the garbage can and left the premises, Two days later, we need it, right? We've all kind of had that experience. And so I've had clients who have been kind of worried about it. Well, if I start wrestling in all these papers, I'm really afraid it's going to bring up more of the anxiety behind an audit, right. believe it or not. So um, trying to allay that worry by, you know, talking about the statistics of IRS audit, um, understanding, you, do you have your you know, what would be the worst thing that would happen if in fact you were audited, you would have to, you know, gather up these papers and take them to your accountant or whatnot. Right, right. So that's, that's an example of catastrophic thinking. If I get involved with this, the worst thing in the world is going to happen. Okay. Well, you know, I think those are some good setups. Uh, we're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, I want to talk about some tips and tricks for overcoming that anxiety because that's really, uh, I think a lot of people can relate with uh, a, a varying degree of these uh, of these whys. So uh, we're with Julie Ulmer, MindingYourManner.com, talking about how to overcome anxiety when getting ready to get organized. And we'll be right back. Oh, there's a place just for you. Life can be busy and you still have to keep it all together. That's why you like to be organized and in control. Introducing MyOrganize.life, a special place where you can get ideas and solutions to organize what's important to you, your important papers, your important decisions, your important life events. We show you the ideas and products to stay organized in your life. See what's new. Stop by and say hello. Visit us at any time at www.myorganize.life. It's just for you. Myorganize.life by Smead. Find us at www.myorganize.life. Myorganize.life. We're back now on Keeping You Organized, talking about uh, how to get organized uh, when you're anxious, uh, how to overcome the anxiety of it. And we're with Julie Ulmer from MindingYourManner.com. Uh, Julie joining us uh, via Skype. And uh, sometimes your frame is freezing up here, but that's okay, Julie. Uh, I think we can hear you perfectly. But let's talk a little bit about the tips and the tricks uh, that, and maybe tricks is not the right word. You know, how do we kind of attack this? Uh, what would be some of the ways that people could uh, overcome 
this. Okay, so some of the techniques that have worked for people in the past um, when it comes to any, any sort of a project, um, one of which is talking out loud. And, and sometimes in the psychology world, they refer to it as self-talk. But talking out loud is something I find my clients doing all the time. When we're together, they're not actually even talking to me. They're picking up an object and they're sort of ruminating about it. And it's the brain um, actual processing that's going on while they're talking about it, mm. picking up something and saying, oh, I, I remember this object. Yeah. Okay. So-and-so gave that to me. And that was a long time ago. And even if it sounds like a story that isn't, you know, really pertinent or it, it's really not an impressive story, it's just the brain actually working out, it, you know, the ideas behind this whether it's a piece of paper or your kid's art project or an actual, you know, tangible 3D inanimate object. Mm -hmm. um, talking it out and mm -hmm. self-talk is something that is used to sort of mimic someone else's response to you and how you're feeling. For instance, um, if someone would, were to pick up that file and, and have that uh, that anxious feeling of, boy, even touching on this, I bet the IRS can feel that I'm doing this and therefore I'm going to bring an audit down on my shoulders. So self-talk would be, hmm, would your best friend come up with that same analogy or what might your best friend say? Your best friend might say, really? Do we really feel like there's, you know, the IRS is getting spidey defenses right now tingling because you're touching on these papers? Um, and, okay, what if the IRS were to audit you? What would be the worst thing that would happen? We're not talking about, you know, you know physical um, detriment or, you know, long-term jail time or anything really traumatic. So sort of facing some of those fears. Um, along with that, facing fears with a buddy, a friend, or even a pet or the symbolism of a pet. So I've had clients, we've used a stuffed animal to sort of replicate me, who I would be if I were with them right there and then. Because, of course, you know, not everyone can um, have the time or the energy or money to hire a professional organizer. But so many clients say, I would never get this done if it weren't for you mm -hmm. um, being here with me now. So some of that body doubling. So can we put some of that body doubling on? Um, could a friend or a buddy just be in the room with you? They don't have to act as an organizer or, you know, an impetus. Just to be in the room with you can oftentimes help. Right. Um, could we apply that buddying to even a pet or, like I said, even a stuffy animal or a houseplant, a favorite houseplant that you can kind of work out that self-talking with? Right. Um, well, you know, I was going to uh, ask you just, uh, is there maybe yeah. a phrase or some words that you would say, you know, use this sentence with this item. And, you know, sometimes when we speak something out, it speaks to our subconscious. Is, is, is that part of this, you think? That can be helpful too, you know, um, picking up that particular item and doing a little self-talk with it, such as, you know, kind of putting yourself in the item, you know, shoes. And this is something that we hear clients do frequently as well sort of the anthropomorphizing of, right. uh, of things. For instance, you know, a, a holiday wreath that stayed in the garage, it didn't get put up at holiday time. Uh, someone may feel like, oh, this poor wreath, you know, I, I missed holiday time. I got stuck out here in the garage. Isn't that kind of sad? Right. Um, could we have the conversation with the actual item and, and use a little bit of, um, you know, visualization along with it too? Right. So, uh, visualization is something I love to use with clients as well, because um, oftentimes they're doing this work alone. They feel alone. They feel isolated. So could we use some creative visualization when you're attacking and organizing um, session and imagine your friends, your family, all of your loved ones actually kind of creating a circle of love and sort of uplifting you and holding you up as you're involved in your organizing or decluttering session. Mm -hmm. So creative visualization is something that's helped people. Right. Um, also imagining a journey that something may take if you're going to say donate it. 
-hmm. For some people, the idea that this particular item, it no longer lives with me. I'm not honoring it anymore myself, but I'm going to donate it and give it to someone else. And imagining the item as it goes through the donation process and ends up in the arms or hands of someone who really would treasure it, who would really be able to utilize it and the glee and the fun on their expression when they find that special thing. Right. So creative visualization is something that can also help um, to sort of allay your fears, calm yourself down, uh, relaxation techniques, deep breathing is helpful. Uh, some people can meditate if they're finding themselves really keyed up. For a lot of people, a little bit of exercise before you go into a decluttering or organizing session can really kind of get the sillies out, you know, like we do with little kids, shake it out the sillies. It gives, uh, gives your uh, cortisol and adrenaline uh, hormones a chance to work themselves out before you actually get into a session. So that's another way to attack things. Yeah, well, I think I'm really fascinated about this because a lot of this ties into the emotions that, you know, typically when we're talking about organizing, we're talking about, you know, looking into the past and things we've gotten or accumulated <laughs> and things like that. So um, any other uh, tips or tricks you want to add into this? Uh, facing those fears, you know, is it, it's not the most comfortable thing in the whole wide world, but a lot of times there's um, things that we've avoided and that's why it has built up, the paper has built up, or we haven't gotten to that filing system that we dream of. Um, because we haven't really faced our fears. And for some people, uh, clutter, getting organized, downsizing, there's oftentimes grief behind things. So, you know, reach out, reach out for help. If you feel like you've hit these stumbling blocks time and time again, it's okay to look for a professional assistant or look for a support group where maybe you could find a buddy to help you. Well, that's going to segue perfectly into uh, talking about minding your manner and some of the services you offer and how, um, how someone can get a hold of you. Yeah, www.mindingyourmanner.com, M-A-N-O-R. And uh, people can reach out to me. I love to help people with their decluttering, downsizing, organizing. I do work with uh, people who are chronically disorganized, mm -hmm. hoarding disorder, helping seniors downsize. Um, and, and with virtual organizing, which is the service that I'm going to be offering very soon, it's having that body double sort of with you, but not necessarily having to get in the car and travel and drive. And for some people, they really appreciate having uh, a professional on the other end of the video conference or on the other end of the phone, helping them to face some of their fears and, and realize that you know, getting organized is not the biggest challenge in the whole wide world, even if it, it seems so in your mind. Well, Julie, thanks so much for uh, another great tip-packed episode. Um, and we'll, we'll have welcome. your contact uh, information as well in the uh, show notes for this show as well. Thanks, John. Love being with you guys. Thanks, Mead. You bet. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, if you're a little anxious about getting to start your organizing project, no matter how big it is, uh, think about some of those things and uh, you can always contact Julie as well. And we will have more tips on all kinds of organizing things on our next episode of Keeping You Organized.